Hello, welcome everyone. Introduction. Camera is one of the major inventions of the mankind. It helped the man to record and capture the events and store it for the future. Just like any other technical instrument, camera is also improved with time. If you look at the timeline of the camera, there are several modifications are done to the camera and the modern day camera looks nothing like the camera that was invented centuries ago. Today, there are many different types of cameras used for different purposes. But the basic structure and idea of the camera remains the same. The mechanism of camera is same as the human eye. That is, the light travels through a lens to form an inverted image on the surface. Even the modern day cameras follow the same principle of capturing the light. But there are basic elements such as lens and exposure, color and composition that one should understand in order to get well versed in the art of photography. If you know them well, you can handle the camera and capture stunning images like a professional. In this lecture, by beginning with the concept of photography and history, we shall learn about the above mentioned basic camera elements which makes the photography easier for you. Photography can be defined as the process of recording visual images by capturing light rays on a light sensitive recording medium. It can be thought of as two pursuits. The first is the technical pursuit which includes the science of setting up the camera and recording medium to take images in a controlled way. The next pursuit which is creative pursuit that is the art of composing good images to capture. There are many different types of photography. In some areas, the photographer must require a special knowledge about the subject being photographed. For example, the scientific photography or forensic photography. Apart from that, almost all other areas of camera basics involves the same basic principles of obtaining a clear and focused images through a lens and onto the recording medium. There are also many types of cameras. Professional photographers like to have a selection of cameras for different purposes. The most popular type of general purpose camera for taking high quality images is the single lens reflex cameras that is SLR cameras. Digitalized SLR cameras are popularly known as DSLR cameras. Nowadays, not only professionals but even amateur photographers own SLR and DSLR cameras. Photography, its techniques and cameras used changed over the years. Traditional photography uses film as the recording medium, which is a chemical process. You might have seen the negatives of such films from which the photographs are developed. But modern day camera is heavily geared towards digital photography, which is an electronic process. In either types of photography, the basic process is the same as illustrated in this image shown on your screen. But if you observe, one thing remains the same in both traditional and modern photography. It is nothing but the optical element of the camera, that is the lens. The role of the lens is to take incoming light rays and bend them from a clear image on the recording medium. The structure of lens determines how much the light is bent and the magnification of the resulting image. So, to understand photography, you need to understand the lenses. Next, we will move to history of photography. The word photography was coined by the scientist Sir John F. W. Herschel in 1839. It comes from the French word photography, which is based on the Greek word phos which is light and graphy which means 
representation by means of the lines or simply drawing, which is totally nothing but drawing with the light. Photography is the science and art of recording images by the means of capturing light on a light sensitive medium such as a film or an electronic sensor. Light patterns reflected or emitted from the objects exposes a sensitive silver halide based chemical or electronic medium during a timed exposure usually through a photographic lens in a device known as camera that also stores the resulting information chemically or electronically. The Pinhole Camera The Chinese were the first people to give the basic idea of the pinhole camera. About 2500 years ago, that is around 5th century BC, they wrote about how an image was formed upside down from a pinhole on the opposite wall. After that, about 2400 years ago, that is 4th century BC, the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle talked about the pinhole image formation in one of his works. You can see in the picture how a tree is captured in the pinhole camera upside down. Next, Camera Obscura. The invention of Camera Obscura is attributed to the Iraqi scientist Al Hazen. He described it in his book of optics. English scientists Robert Boyle and Robert Hooke later invented a portable camera obscura in 1665 and 1666. In the 15th century, many artists including Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci used the camera obscura to help them draw the pictures. This drawing on the screen made in 1652 shows an outer shell with the lenses in the center of each wall and inner shell with transparent paper for the drawing. The artist entered by the trap door in the bottom. Now that we have the basic introduction and history of the camera, let's move towards the lenses and their applications. Module 2 Lenses The most important part of a camera is its lens because the quality of the image the camera captures is depends upon its lens. The most basic lower end camera body fitted with a good lens can make a good picture. But the best camera in the world cannot make a good picture if a poor quality camera lens is used. So let's see how these lenses works. You must have come across the convex and concave lenses while studying physics in your lower classes. So let's recall it. The light strikes the front surface of the lens and passes through the glass element. Since light rays bend when they enter the glass at any angle other than 90 degree, they changes their direction, which is nothing but refraction. So designed in various shapes, lenses are able to channel the light in a specific direction. Focusing occurs because the lens is able to precisely control the direction so that the light rays converge on the point exactly where the sensor is located in the camera and forms the image on it. So all these lenses do is gather the light and focusing it. Next we will see the focal length. The primary characteristic of a lens is its focal length. It is normally represented in millimeters and displayed on the lens barrel along with the size of the adapter ring. To understand lens, we must understand what is a focal length. A lens focal length is not the actual measurement of the lens but is the distance between the lens optical center and the camera's image sensor when focused at infinity. But another question arises, what is optical center? A lens optical center is the point within the lens at which the rays of light from two different sources entering the lens are assumed to cross. Shorter focal length lenses provide a wider field of view but offer less magnification. Conversely, longer focal lengths offer a shorter field of view but 
provide greater magnification. Now let's explore and understand different types of lenses available. First we will see standard or normal lens. The standard lens has a fixed focal length that is 50 millimeters, 85 millimeters and 100 millimeters and produces fairly accurately what the human eye sees in terms of perspective and angle of view. For a 35 millimeter film camera or a full frame DSLR, the 50 millimeter lens is considered as standard lens. At higher focal lengths that is 85 or 100 millimeter, you have an ideal lens for portraiture because when coupled with a wide aperture, they thoroughly soften any background details thus making it less likely to distract from the main subject. Next we will see wide angle lens. A wide angle lens has a shorter focal length when compared to a standard lens. This enables you to capture a comparatively wider angle of view. A wide angle lens is natural choice for capturing outdoor landscapes and group portraits. In fact, wide angle can be the only way to capture the complete setting without omitting any important elements in the image. In this manner, you can use wide angle lenses to capture a deep depth of field. Telephoto lenses Telephoto lenses can provide you with a narrow field of view and a long focal length. These long lenses enable you to compress a distance to create a sense of depth and capture specific objects from far off. Telephoto lenses are great for wildlife and sport photography and can be good to use for portrait when you want to isolate the model from the background. Telephoto lenses with their longer focal length require better light conditions or the use of tripod. There are fast telephoto lenses like a 400 mm lens but these are very expensive and out of reach when it comes to most amateurs and most of these lenses are too heavy to be handled. Next we will see zoom lenses. Zoom lenses have a variable focal length and are extremely useful. Some can range between a wide angle and a telephoto lens. So you have extensive versatility for composition. The trade off with zoom lenses is its aperture. Because of the number of elements required in constructing these lenses, they have a limited ability to open up and allow in the light. So unless you are prepared to outlay a lot of money, you will give up the lens speed. Next it is fisheye lenses. A fisheye lens is a specialized wide angle lens that provides extremely wide images by changing straight lines into curves. It can sometimes produce a circular, convex or oval images by distracting perspective and creating a 180 degree image. The range of focal length varies between 7 to 16 mm in the fisheye lens. Next we will see macro lenses. Macro lenses are used for close-up or macro photography. The range in focal lengths between 50 to 200 mm. These lenses obtain a razor sharp focus for the subjects within the macro focus distance but lose their ability for sharp focus at other distances. These lenses enable the photographer to obtain a life for larger images of the subjects like wasps butterflies and flowers etc. Next tilt shift lenses. The tilt shift lens enables you to manipulate the vanishing points. So when you are shooting buildings you can alter the perspective of an image so the parallel lines don't converge thus eliminating the distorting quality of the lens. The tilt shift lens also enables you to selectively focus an image where only specific portions of the image are in focus and out of focus within the same plane. Finally, we will see image stabilization lens. These lens contain a small gyro stabilizer sensors and servo actuated lens elements 
which purportedly correct for camera shake that occurs within the longer focal length lens or in low light conditions when you need to have slow shutter speeds to achieve an effective EV. It is claimed that these lenses enable the user to shot handheld at 2 to 4 stop slower shutter speeds than the minimum required for a sharp image. So, there are many possible lens choices and all will give you a different and distinct images. Part of your creativity is in selecting the right lens to capture the vision of the world the way one wants to see it. Now we will move to the next module that is exposure. Exposure is one of the most basic elements of the photography. It is the amount of the light that falls on the sensor in the camera while taking a photo. So exposure is what determines the brightness of a photograph. If the shot is exposed for a longer time, it is overexposed that the photo will become too bright or wash out. If the exposure time is very less, the photo is underexposed and will be too dark. There are three different elements that determine the right exposure and each one of them control the exposure in a different way. They are aperture which controls the area over which the light can enter the camera and the shutter speed which controls the duration of the exposure and finally the ISO which controls the sensitivity of the camera sensor to a given amount of light. One or many combinations of these settings can be used to get the same exposure. But there is a little trick here that is when you change the aperture it changes the depth of field. Slowing down the shutter speed may blur the motion and ISO affects the noise of the image. To understand it more easily, let's consider exposure is a triangle, an equal triangle where all the three sides are equal. The three elements that are mentioned above are its three sides. So if we change the value of any one of the side, the triangle will no more be an equal triangle and you will not get the perfect exposure. So whenever we are changing the value of one element, you have to change the other two elements to get a perfect exposure. So why are these three elements are so important? Let us see them one by one. Aperture. Aperture is a circular opening in the lens. It can be adjustable in various different sizes. It decides how much light passes through the lens and touches the digital sensor of the camera. To make it more simple, think of a window blind as your aperture and the wall against the window as the sensor. When we open these blinds, we can see the wall gets brightened as there are more and more light coming through the windows. In the same way, the opening of the aperture of the lens provides more light to the sensor of the film. The opening of the lens or aperture is expressed in f-stops. So first we shall understand what are these f-stops. In optics, f numbers which are sometimes also called focal ratio, f ratio, f-stops of an optical system expresses the diameter of the entrance of the pupil in terms of focal length of the lens. In simpler terms, the f number is the focal length divided by the effective aperture diameter. The f numbers follow what is internationally agreed standard sequence relating to the brightness of the image. In the sequence above, f 1.4 is the widest aperture allowing most light through for the bright image. F22 is the smallest letting only a fraction of light through it allowing for a greater depth of field and most useful on very bright days. Note that aperture scale extends beyond the example above with the apertures wider than F1.4 and smaller than F22 often being possible on many lenses. Next we will see depth of field. 
Depth of field is the distance between the nearest and farthest parts of a subject that can be realized as a photographic image with reasonably sharp detail at one focus setting of the lens. Widest aperture that is the smallest f number opening of the lens gives least depth of field while smallest aperture with highest f number gives the greatest. Depth of focus is often confused with the depth of field, but remember depth of field is concerned with making the light from different subject distances all come to focus at one lens setting whereas depth of focus refers to how much you can change the lens to image distance without the focused image becoming noticeably blurred. Next shutter speed. A camera shutter speed is the speed in which the shutter opens and closes. It determines how long the camera sensor will be exposed to the light coming from the lens. The more fast is the shutter speed, less will be the exposure time. Shutter speed is normally measured in fractions of seconds ranging from 1 by 8000 seconds to 3 to 4 seconds. You can see different values of shutter speed on your screen. You can either capture the subject in just a flash or you can also capture it in more than 2 to 3 seconds. In some cameras, the shutter speed remains open until the photographers close it manually. Surprisingly, the shutter speed also has the control over the capturing of motion in the picture. A faster shutter speed gives a sharper image freezing the moment while a lower shutter speed blurs the image giving a sense of continuous movement in the picture. For example, if you are capturing a waterfall, adjusting your camera for a faster shutter speed, you can capture the picture in which each and every water drop is visible. But in contrast, if you capture it with a slower shutter speed, all you get is a white line of flowing water. Now we will move to ISO. ISO was the indication of the sensitivity of the camera to light. It is measured in numbers like 100, 200, 400, 800, etc. With a higher ISO, the image can be captured even in the low light. But the ISO number is directly proportional to the noise of the captured image. That is, higher the number, higher will be the sensitivity of the light and there will be much noise or grains in the image you are capturing. Most people leave the ISO in cameras in auto mode and never bothers to change it. So, the camera adjusts the ISO itself according to the light available. But with the manual mode, you have all the freedom to set it on your own. Normally, all the cameras comes with a base ISO, which is the lowest ISO number of the sensor on which a high quality image with no noise can be produced. Some of the major DSLR cameras like Nikon have the base ISO of 200 and Canons have the ISO of 100. These ISOs are considered normal and are used to get perfect noiseless images. We can stick to these settings to get the high quality images, but on low light conditions it may be necessary to change it. Do keep it in mind that when you change the ISO, it affects the exposure along with the aperture and shutter speed as well because it directly affects the sensor of the camera. If you have seen the ISO settings in the camera, they can only be increased in two folds that is beginning from the 100 or 200, then next jumps to 400 and then to 800 and so on. So when the ISO is doubled, the exposure is also doubled. Hence, they are proportional to each other. So, always know when to change the ISO. Under well lit conditions, make sure that your ISO is set to its lowest value. It gives a clear picture with no noise. Use a medium range of ISO while shooting indoors or under low lights. Yes, it comes with grinds, but you have no other choice. 
you can use high ISO under extreme low light conditions where you can't use a flash but you need to get the details of the image you are capturing. So let's summarize what we have learned. Getting to know the basics of the camera is important for many photographers. It helps them to improve their photography skills. The photography, its techniques and cameras used are changed over years. But if we observe, the basic structure and functions of the camera remains the same. The lens captures the light and forms an inverted image on the sensor of the camera. There are different types of photographic lenses available with different focal lengths. They are used for different purposes. For instance, telephoto lenses are used for wildlife photography and close-up images are captured using macro lenses. Exposure is the amount of the light falling on the sensor of the camera. It is determined by three elements. They are aperture which controls the area through which the light passes, shutter speed controls the duration of the exposure and ISO controls the sensitivity of the camera sensor to a given amount of light. To get a right exposure, make sure you understand these three elements that control the exposure. Go on and experiment with different exposure settings and practice it because only practice makes the man perfect.